the site out, uh, you'll see projects. There's interviews with designers and digitizers. Today I'm here in Edmond, Oklahoma at OESD and I'm getting to meet a lot of the people here. But if you aren't as lucky as I am, if you go to the blog, you'll see a lot of um, articles on some of the people that work here. You'll also find tips and techniques on that page. You'll get inspired by other embroiderers when you check out the brag board. And just a couple of weeks ago, there was a contest. And if you left a remark on the uh, page, you were entered into a contest to win two sets of designs. So you want to definitely check out and see when the contests are. So once again, I want to encourage you, if you haven't been to DIYEmbroidery.com, be sure and check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. Today's presentation is on quilting using your embroidery machine. And I hope you gain a lot of tips and techniques from today's presentation. The presentation will give you an overall view of quilting using your embroidery machine and we're going to show three different methods. So let's get started. Today's focus project is this cute little quilt here on the left hand side. Today's sewing machines make it a lot easier than ever to do your own machine quilting. And the first method that I want to show you is hooping using a stabilizer. This quilt was done with Embroidery Online Design Connection Collection number 80028. It's called American Icons. The quilting on this quilt was done with the Patriotic Line Quilting and that number is 12207. Here are some of the supplies we're going to need to do this cute quilt with. It's of course going to be the Embroidery Online Design Collections, American Icon, and Patriotic Line Quilting. This quilt was made with 100% cotton fabric. We also used a fusible poly mesh stabilizer. We used a tearaway stabilizer and when you're looking for tearaway stabilizer, you might want to look for the wash away tearaway stabilizer. That way, when uh, it comes time to remove that stabilizer, all you need to do is spritz it with some water and you don't have to get in those little quilting lines and pick out that stabilizer. So tearaway stabilizer, but look for the wash away. We're also going to show a method using the water soluble stabilizer. We're going to need temporary spray adhesive. We're going to have batting for the quilt and embroidery thread. And the embroidery thread that I used on the quilts that I'm going to show you today is Isocord. It is 100% polyester thread. And the size needle that we're going to be using is going to be a 7580 sharp. And sharp is what we're really looking for. It's going to penetrate all three layers and it's going to give you the best results. I wanted to show you um, this little quilt that I made and it's on the DIYEmbroidery.com and it's using the same designs that are on the quilt that we're featuring today and that's the American icons. They are designed by Deborah Jordan Bryan and they are really cute little designs that um, remind me of the 4th of July this month but also uh, just a great patriotic theme and uh, makes a really cute little wall hanging. But if you'd like to know how to make this quilt, uh, you can check out the blog on DIYEmbroidery.com and it'll give you the instructions on how to do this. So let's get started. Here's the fabric that I chose for the quilt today. We're going to cut 
nine and a half inch squares from the red and blue fabric. We're going to cut 11 inch squares from the cream fabric. That's because we're going to do the embroidery on that cream fabric. And by cutting it 11 inches, that's going to give us a little extra room in case the fabric draws up during the embroidery process. And it's also going to give us a little wiggle room to square that square up after the embroidery and get it just perfect. And we're going to cut three strips of the flag material here, which is our border fabric, and those are going to be three and a half inch strips. So not much cutting to do. It's a quick quilt, and um, we're going to first start by fusing polymesh stabilizer to the back of the cream squares and get them ready for embroidering. I also cut two squares of batting, 11 inches, and join them to the polymesh stabilizer and cream square by using temporary spray adhesive. Just marrying all three of those layers together. Selecting the designs, two designs from the American Icon Embroidery uh, Collection. They were uh, design number one and design number five, which is the little dog here, really cute. Um, we're going to hoop up all three layers in our hoop and we're going to embroider out the designs just like we regularly do and we're going to follow the machine prompts for the thread changes. Once the embroidery is completely done on these two squares, we're going to cut them down to the finished size of nine and a half inches. Next we're going to poly mesh, we're going to fuse the poly mesh stabilizer to the black uh, back of the blue and the red nine and a half inch square. And we're going to use a fourth of an inch seam allowance to join the first cream square to the blue square. And if you have one of those feet that have the guide on the side, it gives you a perfect fourth of an inch and it makes it a whole lot easier if you have the correct foot to get that seam allowance perfect. Once we have the first two squares sewn together, we're going to sew the red square to the opposite cream square, also using a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now you have two pieces. What you'll do is then you'll join the top part of your square to the bottom part of your quilt and you'll be using a fourth of an inch seam allowance on that also. So now you have completed your little four patch and we're going to add borders to the side of the quilt. We'll use the three and a half inch strips to attach on both sides and we'll also be using that fourth of an inch seam allowance to attach the border to the quilt. Next we'll be joining the top and the bottom part of the quilt to the four patch and we'll be using a fourth of an inch seam allowance on those seams also. Your piecing is complete once you have the top and the bottom border strips on there and your quilt should measure approximately 24 and a half inches by 24 and a half inches. And now we're ready to get started on our first method of quilting using your embroidery machine. We're going to cut backing and batting approximately two inches larger on all sides than the little quilt top that you just made. We're going to layer the quilt back right side facing down. Here's the quilt back. And here's a little tip for some of you who don't like to see those tie-offs on the back side. If you pick a really busy fabric, it's much harder to see those tie-offs. So that's why you see this busy fabric here. We're going to lay our batting on top of our backing. 
and then we're going to center the quilt top on these two layers. We're going to secure all the layers and you can do this by either pinning, you could hand baste this, or you could machine baste it. Also, you can do a combination if you would like to pin and hand baste or pin and machine baste. The, the more you have it secured, the less the fabric is going to shift on you and the better the results. But this little quilt was uh, easy to manage and all I did was do the pinning for it. Next, we're going to hoop one or two layers of the tearaway stabilizer. And like we said at the very beginning, you want to look for that wash away tearaway stabilizer. So it makes it much easier at the end to get all that stabilizer out. On the tearaway stabilizer, you're going to mark the center of the hoop by drawing vertical and horizontal lines. That's going to help you find your, your uh, center for your design. You're going to mark the center of the blues quilt square. That's what you're going to place on top of the stabilizer. Because this fabric was so dark, I needed a chalk marker to help see the lines. And this is just a white one. They come in several different colors, but it made it so I could see exactly where I wanted to place this in the hoop. I usually use a straight pin and mark it right here in the center and then as I lay it down on top of the hoop I'm matching that center to the stabilizer center that we just marked. You're going to spray temporary adhesive on the stabilizer and then we're going to place the block down on top of the stabilizer matching the center of the blue quilt square to the center of the stabilizer and that's where I use the straight pin. We're going to smooth the whole sandwich out from the center on out to the sides. And if another tip, if you do not like the tie-offs on the back, if you want to use your hand wheel to roll it forward and pop up that bobbin thread, that won't leave a tail on the underneath side to, so that you won't be able to see that. So it's optional. A lot of designs, um, the way they're digitized, you, you might not even notice that it has the tie-off, but if it's something that bothers you, uh, this helps with that. And that's all you're doing is you're rolling the hand wheel forward and popping that bottom bobbin thread up to the top. We're going to quilt using the Embroidery Online Design Collection number 12207, the Patriotic Line Quilting, and I'd like to show you how you would find those designs on the Embroidery Online website. Oops, I didn't open it up ahead of time. So you're just going to go to Embroidery Online's homepage, and here you see it's scrolling through the new designs that are out. But we're just going to come up here to the search box, and we're going to type in the uh, design collection number, which was 12207. And then we're going to left click here on the search button, and it's going to bring up the patriotic line quilting. I'm just going to left click on the name and it's going to give me more information. It's going to tell me how many designs are in this collection. It's going to give me a PDF to, to preview the sewing information. And if I just want to slide down and look to see what different quilting designs they have and choose the one I want, I like the star ones. They went with the fabric that I had. But there's also, if I wanted to do the borders, there were a lot of good designs for that one also. So that's how you find the designs.
and your sewing information. Here's the design that I chose. I did hoop up my fabric and um, my centers didn't match so I used my aligning tool to move my needle to line up with my chalk mark here. And I really like this picture because it showed I did a really good job on getting the, the placement of the design exactly where I wanted it. Another thing I would like to point out is I also used a basting box around the design. That helped join all those fabrics and the stabilizer together so it made uh, the design uh, hopefully not shift uh, if uh, during the design during the embroidery process. So that was a, a good safety net for me right there to use the basting box. Here's the completed design, and this single design, that number was BD604 underscore 48, and like I said, one of the reasons I really liked this design is it matched the background fabric here, which was the blue with the stars. Very patriotic. The next method um, it's going to be just what we talked about, except instead of the tearaway stabilizer, we're going to use the washaway stabilizer. So here I'm using a handy little tool, which is called a master hooper. And what that does is it has a little clip here on the side, and I can clip my bottom hoop into that master hooper, and it holds the opening um, spread apart just a little bit. It holds that bottom hoop so that it doesn't shift. There's a, a rubber uh, matting on the bottom which keeps the master hooper from shifting. So when I um, put my, my uh, quilt sandwich in here or when I do any type of embroidery, it just holds this down for me and it's like a third hand. But uh, we're going to, just like we did on the tearaway stabilizer, we're going to mark the wash away by drawing vertical and horizontal lines to get our center. Next, we're going to mark the center of the red quilt square. On this, I just used one of the fabric markers that you can remove by uh, applying heat with an iron. I spray adhesive, uh, used a temporary spray adhesive to uh, marry the red quilt square to the batting and stabilizer. And next we're going to place the block down on top of the stabilizer, matching the center of the red quilt square to the center of the wash away stabilizer. That's where I'll stick that straight pin in here and match it up to the, the stabilizer that's in the hoop. And then I'll just start spreading this out and smoothing it flat into the hoop. Here is a picture of the back side. I just wanted to show you after the embroidery was done, I just went in and removed the stabilizer that's right in here. It was pretty easy to remove, but some of these that are in the little loops are a little bit harder to remove. You can still see some of the wash away stabilizer here. That, that's what makes this really nice. What doesn't come out, you can always rinse with water or spritz with water, and that will remove that stabilizer away. Of the two methods of the tearaway and the 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 tearaway and the aqua film. This was probably a little bit easier process. They both were the same as far as the embroidery. They both held up really well. There was no uh, big penetration or anything like that. It was just much easier to remove this one than it was the tearaway stabilizer for me anyway. So that that was my preference on which stabilizer to use when you're hooping your stabilizer. But either one worked well. 
here is the finished quilt and um, after the embroidery of the quilting designs here all we did was remove the stabilizer from the back of the quilt I pressed it really well from the back side and then I attached my walking foot and I just stitched here in the ditch around each square and completely around the four patch and using that walking foot made it really really easy because it moved all the fabric at the same time and then I just uh, put the binding on the quilt and it was completed it was a really quick and a really easy project and the uh, machine embroidery was much easier than um, doing it by myself and the designs turned out perfect and uh, I think the quilt turned out really cute. So that was the first technique. I'd like to show you the second technique which is going to be using a new design release for, here at Embroidery Online and it's called Doodle Line Quilting and the number for that is one two four seven six and let me just show you how to find those on the Embroidery Online um, website we're going to left click on the home button and we're going to come back to our original screen and we're just going to scroll down a little bit and you'll see the new releases button here and I'm just going to left click on that and you'll see all the new designs that are coming out but here's the doodle line quilting so I'm just going to left click on that and it's going to bring up all the information you can click the preview sewing information for a PDF of the different designs and the thread colors and the stitch count we're going to scroll down and see the different uh, designs I could have chose from. All of them really pretty and they're really really beautiful. They're done in ice. I did mine in the isocord thread and they turned out really pretty on this black background. okay so we're back to doing the doodle line quilt it's made exactly the same as the last quilt except instead of the the main blocks being nine and a half inches they're going to be eight and a half inches and we're still going to piece those with a fourth of an inch seam allowance we're going to sew the border strips and they are a little bit smaller than our previous border strips they're three inches and we're still using that fourth of an inch seam allowance and we're going to apply the sides first and then the top and the bottom and finished your quilt shop top should measure right around 21 22 inches square um, but just a little bit smaller than the last quilt also something a little different I did in uh, I went ahead and and uh, cut the backing and the batting two inches larger on all the sides and then I did put the uh, face down with the batting on top and centered the quilt but I went ahead and pinned it all together and then I did my stitching in the ditch around all the squares with my walking foot attached and that just secured all three layers before I took it to the embroidery machine so it gave it a little bit more security and um, then once you have all of that done you're going to uh, take it to the embroidery machine but first because we're going to hoop all three of those layers we want to make sure that our screw is is uh, has a lot of room in here so you're going to loosen it not all the way off you're going to make sure you leave a little bit here at the top so it doesn't fall off but you're going to loosen it up quite a bit more than what you do for regular embroidery but that's just to get all three layers into the hoop 
We're also going to use the large embroidery hoop for the designs that we chose. And we're going to mark the center of all four squares. And the white chalk works on this also. We're going to use our hoop template to position all the layers in the hoop. So I just laid my guideline on top of those uh, white chalk marks. And I used my master hooper on this. It worked great. It held that bottom hoop. And I was able to roll the fabric up on the sides and place my thumb right here in the corners. And then easily it slipped into that master hooper, popped right in, and I just tightened the screw. And there's actually a little hole right here where the screw's at. So it makes it real easy to tighten that screw up and not have to lift up or, or um, try to uh, make this... Uh, hoop uh, tighten up without all the fabric popping back out. I just wanted to show you this picture. It's the back of the hoop and there is no stabilizer on this method. It's just hooping the three layers of fabric together and your batting is acting as your stabilizer for the machine embroidery. So no stabilizer on this method. So next I chose my thread colors for the quilt. There's four squares and I chose them because I knew I wanted to make my binding out of this really pretty Benertex fabric. And um, I just matched my thread to the binding material. And just like the, the last time, we're going to center the design in our hoop. We're going to use a basting box. If we want to bring that bobbin thread up to the top, we're going to use our hand wheel to get that bobbin thread up to the top. This is one of the designs, and I wanted to show this to you because this is actually the back of the quilt, not the front. And it looks just as pretty on the back as it does the front. The way it was digitized, you don't see uh, the thread knots at all. There must be buried or running stitches or I don't know how they did it, but it was it's beautiful uh, on both sides. As you can tell, on both quilts, I use the same bobbin thread uh, color that I used for the top of the quilt. So. Um, it looks the same on the top as it does on the bottom. And here's the picture of the finished quilt. It's a little grainy, and I'm sorry about that. I used my phone to take the picture, but you can kind of get the idea here of these beautiful thread colors on this black fabric. It is just really, really pretty. And um, I'm still thinking about later, later coming in and putting some of those border designs here on the side, maybe just down two sides to, to add a little more color also. But um, I pressed it well from the back side. Um, I uh, bound, uh, put the binding on just the same way as the last quilt, and it was uh, really quick because the embroidery design, I think this largest design at the very most was 12, 13 minutes to stitch out. So this quilt was a very, very easy and quick project. Uh, the, uh, this little embroidery design here probably took about eight or nine minutes. So it was uh, really quick and lots of fun and I think it turned out really pretty. So let me show you the third method that we're going to be using. Here is a uh, embroidery collection called Modern Continuous Line Quilting. The number for that is 12458. And this quilt was one of the quilts that went to Austin for the modern, the very first uh, modern quilt show that um, the Modern Quilt Guild put on. And all the quilts there were definitely modern, uh, bright, a little different. But um, the fabrics bright, the embroidery uh, machine 
quilting is a little different, but went with the quilt really well. But how we did that was layered all three layers, just like the last method. So backing, batting, and the top are all here. And instead of using the Master Hooper, we used the Magna Quilts and Border uh, Hoop. And this hoop does not have any screws. This is a magnetic inner ring. And so once you attach it to the hoop, it just snaps in place using that magnetic ring to hold it all in place. It works really well. The one thing you want to remember about using this method is if you're doing a very large quilt, there's going to be a lot of material here at the bottom, maybe off to the side. So you're going to have to, to and this is with even uh, uh, the other methods, if you have a really large quilt, you're going to want to hold this fabric up so that it doesn't drag and pull on your hoop and and pull on your design so um, but this one definitely if it's a large quilt you're going to have to give it a little support by holding it up while it does the machine embroidery and if you have a hard time with that last method of trying to get all three layers in the hoop this is really probably uh, the answer for you because there is no screw and it literally just lays on top and locks into position. There's no tightening, there's no, um, if you have a little bit of arthritis, there's no pain, there's no extra work, it just lays right on top to do the embroidery. So that was our last method, but I'd like to show you a couple other quilts. Here's another quilt that Christy took to the uh, Modern Quilt Guild in uh, February. It's a very modern design, and as you can see, it has lots of open spaces, perfect for machine embroidery. And um, it also has machine embroidery using the little uh, dinosaurs are applique on. There's also a little uh, embroidered dinosaur in the, in the squares, so it was kind of neat. Um, looking for the dinosaurs. So Christy came up with this wonderful idea of hooping all three layers. And here's an open space here that we're going to do some machine uh, uh, embroidery quilting in. And the dinosaur is one of the, the designs in the collection. And it was the one this design is the one that we had in the hoop. And then once it was off the hoop, Christy did this really adorable little pebble design uh, on the machine. So it has both uh, types of quilting. Here you can see she has um, put on her machine gloves in order to machine quilt that after the design has already been stitched out. And I wanted to show you this. This was the border, a really cute modern design, um, just stitching rows down for your quilting in the border, but I thought that was a really cute idea. And here's the finished quilt. So now not only do we have design, the dinosaurs in the applique, dinosaurs in the little squares, but now you have to hunt for those quilted dinosaurs that are in the big squares. So really pretty. It was really, uh, everybody really enjoyed it when they saw it uh, hanging up at, at market. So it was uh, uh, a very popular quilt. Very different looking. Um, very modern looking. But you can tell just by the way that you quilt it makes a big difference on how the quilt turns out. Here's the last uh, quilt that I want to show you. It is one of Embroidery Online's uh, best-selling quilt design. And as you can see, it's really elegant. It's beautiful stitched out. This is just a black isocord thread on the top and on the bottom. And it's quilted dimensions, number 1, 2, 3, 8, 0. A little bit different about this quilt is it was a quilt-as-you-go quilt. And um, the fabrics are joined using a seam on the top. And then they're cut down. 
and this ribbon is placed over it to hide the seams. So uh, the embroidery was done first, and then the blocks were cut down to the correct size and then joined together. And then the ribbon was placed over that exposed seam so that you couldn't see it. So it was really a quick and easy way to make a little tabletop quilt. So um, I hope you enjoyed our presentation today. Christy and I had fun uh, being here, and she is going to take some of your uh, questions for you. So let me turn it over to Christy so she can answer. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. I see we've got quite a few questions already, so I'm going to kind of go through these. Let's kind of back up through the list of questions that you have, and I'll repeat the question so that um, all of you can hear the question, and then um, the answer. Our first question is, are these um, webinars ever in audio and video? Um, our webinars, uh, we don't typically do uh, live video. We tend to do the um, a screen uh, with the PowerPoints and then a, an audio. Live video is possible and we've, we've looked into that. The main reason we don't offer it is it requires really high speed internet for people to really get a good quality when you're doing it live. Um, however, we are, uh, we are looking into that and we do have a number of videos available on our YouTube channel and are working on some new ones for you. Um, the next question is, how often do we have webinars? We have a new webinar about once a month. And I was going to show you, actually, let me pull that up, on Embroidery Online. If you go to the Embroidery Online homepage, um, oh, actually, we took it down because this one's down. Anytime we have a new uh, webinar available for you, you could actually, you'll see a link here on the main page that announces the webinar. So if you check our uh, main homepage, you'll see a link there. We also post all of our webinar listings to um, Facebook, and so you can register for them there. And then we also will be sending you a link in your email that you will receive um, after this session is over. You'll get a link to this page, which is our webinar archives page. And on this page, you'll be able to view all the old webinars, including this one, will be posted to this page. And we also post all of our upcoming webinars to this page. So you can use that to find out about the new webinars we have coming up. Another question is, is a design purchased individually or in a collection? All of the designs that we offer on Embroidery Online can be purchased either way. Your best value is always going to be to buy the collection. Typically when you buy a collection of designs from Embroidery Online, um, you're going to be paying uh, between $1 and $2 per design um, on average. So like this collection is $59.99 and it has 30 designs in it, so you're paying about $2 per design. However, if there's only one or two designs out of the collection that you need, you can purchase those designs individually. Uh, when you scroll down underneath uh, the main page of the collection, if you just see one of these and you just want that one design, you can click on that design and then click Detailed View, and it will take you to the individual design page for that design. Single uh, non-licensed designs, uh, which are most of the designs we talked about today, um, the American icons are licensed. We have a licensed artist we work with, but single non-licensed designs are $9.99 on regular ice. So if you just need one or two, then you would probably be better off to buy the singles. But if you think you might need three or four, um, you start to get to the position where it's usually a better price for you to buy them as a collection, which you can choose. Um, I have a question asking to um, explain the Master Hooper in more detail. I'm going to table that question and let you answer it uh, in a moment, Terry. Um, hints from removing 505 from your embroidery hoop. Oh, what a great question. Um, a couple things. Number one, most important is prevention from getting the spray on your hoop in the first place. And there actually is a little tool out there that's available um, that is a hoop guard that is a molded piece of plastic that will fit over the hoop. Um, it's not available for every brand of hoop, but I know they have quite a few of them, and it's a little bit of an investment, but I bought one and I love it. 
However, if you don't want to purchase a hoop guard, you can make your own hoop guard uh, by using a piece of cardboard and cutting a hole out in the center of that cardboard that's about the size of the inside of your hoop. And then you place that over your hoop when you do the spraying, and it keeps you from getting um, spray onto the hoop. Um, then to answer your question, how do you get the 505 off the hoop once it's on there? Um, there are a couple things you can do. There are some products on the market. Um, there's one called DK5. Um, it works really well, but let me warn you, it does not smell very good, but it does work very well. Um, there is another one called HR0 that is a pretty good at getting the... Um, it's a spray that you actually spray on, and it's pretty good at removing the uh, adhesive. Um, another option that's a little bit easier to find is, call, is Murphy's Oil Soap. works pretty well. If you take the Murphy's Oil Soap, you can dilute it a little bit, or you can actually use it full strength with like a cotton swab to get it on there, and then you can get the... Um, the adhesive off. Uh, the other trick I found is using a scraper of some sort. So either if you have fingernails, you can use your fingernails to actually scrape it because even with the spray, it won't just rub off. You will need to scrape the adhesive off. Uh, but you can use a, a, a plastic putty knife to scrape off that extra adhesive. The next question is what type of thread did we use for the designs um, in black. Um, the ones that were done on black, actually all the designs that Terry showed today, she used the isocord embroidery thread, um, but you could use a number of different types of thread uh, there. Um, the embroidery, the quilting designs that Embroidery Online creates are all digitized for a 40 weight thread. You can use a 40 weight embroidery thread, but you can also use a 40 weight quilting thread like a quilting cotton thread. Um, you can um, do variegated or solid. Either one's going to look fine, but all of the projects that Terry showed today, she used the isocord embroidery thread. Um, another question, do you adjust your tension at all when doing machine quilting? It depends on your machine. Um, occasionally I have found that with, when doing machine quilting that I need to tighten the upper tension just a little bit. With regular embroidery, you're, you want the um, top stitch to pull to the back. So you actually want that bobbin tension to be a little tighter than normal when you're doing regular embroidery. When you're quilting with your embroidery machine, you want a little bit more balanced stitch so that the knots are actually ending up in the middle of your quilting sandwich as opposed to on the back of your fabric. However, um, it takes a real expert to be able to tell the difference. So if you're just getting started, um, do a test sew and see how it looks to you, um, and then begin adjusting your tension based on your machine in particular. So you may find that you want to adjust the top tension slightly tighter or the bobbin tension slightly looser. If you have um, an alternate bobbin case for your embroidery machine, as some machines do have a separate bobbin case for sewing than they do for embroidery, or if you have a different um, uh, threading path for sewing than for embroidery, when you're actually quilting with an embroidery machine, you might want to try using the regular sewing bobbin case or the the threading path for sewing because you want more of a sewing type stitch than an embroidery stitch. But it takes a little bit of, of testing. It depends on the machine. I found that with most machines, I can actually, um, pardon me, I can actually leave the tension pretty much as it is uh, by normal and maybe just slightly adjust the top tension. Another question is about the magnetic hoop. Um, the magnetic hoops are actually a product from a company called Designs and Machine Embroidery. And while I'm here on Embroidery Online, I will show you where you can find them. If you go to Supplies and then click Designs and Machine Embroidery, you will see the different hoops. Um, you'll see several ones that are um, magnetic, any of them that say Magna. Um, so the Magna Frame, which is a, uh, a hoop, but then also the Magna Quilter is the one we were talking about specifically. Um, these are hoops that are going to be specific to your machine, so you would want to look for the one that is for your brand of machine. If you click on any of these, so for example, if I click on this one, you can read more about it, and it will tell you more about that particular hoop. 
Um, some of the designs and machine and product in embroidery products also actually have um, additional information in the form of a video or other information that's posted there. Uh, but that's where I would recommend that you start for more information about those um, magnetic hoops. And you'll find them again under our supplies tab under designs and machine embroidery. And you can see here the price really ranges depending on the size. I have the question about the price. Depends on the size of the hoop and the size of the uh, and the type of machine that you're uh, looking for. So they range anywhere from around $100 to, uh, depending on the set, up to um, this one is $500, but it's got the full, this one's for an uh, industrial machine. Oh, thanks, Terry, uh, noted to me that it comes with 125 designs. So you get some added value to that uh, particular hoop. Another question, was your bobbin thread the same as the top thread? Yes, it is not just the same color, but also the exact same thread. So you're going to use whatever you're using in the needle, you want to use the same thread in the bobbin. When you're doing regular embroidery, your bobbin thread is a lighter weight than your embroidery thread. But with, uh, when quilting with an embroidery machine, then you want to use the same thread, both top and bottom. And if you go also on Embroidery Online, you can see our thread um, category under Supplies. If you go to Thread, you will see that we have a number of different thread types and a couple that I can recommend for quilting. One of them is called Timeless. It's a 40-weight polyester embroidery thread, but also works great for quilting. Um, Yen Met is a metallic thread, but it's also 40 weight, and this particular thread has a polyester coating on it that makes it run a little bit smoother, and I have actually quilted with it as well. And then finally, the last one I would recommend is this YLI Variations. Now, we only have this for a little bit longer because the manufacturer has, um, has actually discontinued it, um, but we do have a little bit left in stock, and the variations give you that variegated uh, color. Um, another question, where can you find the thread that was used on the black designs? Um, if you're talking about the ones that were on the black fabric, which is the, um, let me go and open that one up, which is the new releases, and under the doodle line quilting, we do have a tab on um, our collections that will show you the thread colors. So if we wanted to see what the thread colors are for this one, if you click Related Supplies, these are the three colors that were used in that collection. So some really bright, uh, bold colors. And you can always find them there. You also can find the thread colors, um, if you're looking for the Isocord brand, you can find that on the thread chart. It will list both the Isocord and the Timeless. But you will always find a Related Supplies tab that will show you the colors right there. Um, the quilt that was actually with black thread, that was the um, just a solid black uh, embroidery thread. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it does sound like I'm saying I support thread. Sorry about that. It's Isocord. Um, let me pull it up. It's ISA. C-O-R-D, Isocord, is a brand. That's a, a brand that's carried in um, a lot of independent sewing stores. So that's a brand that we support um, in our collections, and we always list that thread color. Um, so it's the I, and it's Isocord is listed right here on the uh, thread chart. Um, and that you would find in a uh, local um, independent sewing shop or quilt shop. The timeless thread is our online thread and that you can actually order directly from us online. Uh, next question um, says, so you quilted with an embroidery thread, not a quilting thread. Um, 
Yes, you can do either, but all of the projects we showed today we used an embroidery thread. Now, we would not recommend that you use a rayon embroidery thread because a rayon embroidery thread is going to be um, fairly weak and it's probably not going to hold up in your quilt as much as you would like it to. Quilts get a lot of love and a lot of wear and tear, so a rayon embroidery thread probably is not going to hold up for you. However, the polyester embroidery th threads that are on the market today are very strong and very sturdy. And are just as strong as a, a cotton thread would be to hold your quilt together. Um, so we can we definitely can recommend that um, that you use a polyester embroidery thread to do your quilting. I like to use the polyester because it has a shine to it, which makes a nice little contrast between the cotton fabric and the embroidery and the quilting, so it really shows up. If, however, you prefer that matte look that, or that true cotton look, you can use a 40 weight cotton quilting thread instead and that will work just as fine as just as well as the embroidery thread as long as you choose a 40 weight and there are a number of great 40 weight um, cotton quilting threads on the market uh, that you can use and they're available in both solid and in variegated colors. Okay, Terry, I'm going to turn it back over to you so you can talk a little bit more about that um, hoop holder. And if there's any more questions, you'll see it um, just listed right there. Okay, let me see if I can get back to the picture that shows the Master Hooper. Um, That's up here somewhere. There it is. Here is the Master Hooper. It is, um, it is a, oh, I, it's not Corian, it's not wood, but it's very thick. Um, it really looks like Corian uh, countertops, but um, I'm not sure what type of material it is, but it's, uh, has a rubber bottom so when you place it on a surface it doesn't shift or move here um, is the depending and you purchase it for the type of machine and the type of hoop you have this uh, master hooper will fit all of my hoops it fits a small medium large and it also fits my jumbo hoop so um, when I purchased this I told him the brand of machine I had and uh, then uh, I think what they're looking for is where your uh, connection is for your hoop and that slides on there. When that slides on there, it holds this bottom, inner, bottom hoop open just a little bit here and that's what makes it slide in better. It also has this uh, opening for when you're ready to tighten the screw back up. You're not having to pull this off of the table or slide it over or anything. Your hand fits right underneath here and it allows you to turn the screw a lot easier. Uh, my jumbo hoop has a great knob on here that works really well, but I also like it for my jumbo hoop because um, it is like a third hand. What I'm able to do is place this um, bottom hoop in here and then I will hoop all three layers and I will usually scrunch up the fabric here and put my thumb here on my inner hoop, scrunch up the fabric here and put my thumb here on my inner hoop and then when I go I slide it into the back and then it just pops here in the front because this is open just a little bit and it uh, just as no stress on your wrist or your fingers. Um, I don't have arthritis. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I have taught a lot of classes and this is one of the projects that I, or uh, products that I really liked. And, um, you know, I first would tell people about it because they had a hard time hooping because they had pain in their hands or their wrists. But 
when I would demonstrate it, it was just so easy uh, to, and I wasn't struggling or fighting, and so um, I, as they say, bit the bullet and purchased one. They're not inexpensive, but if you do a lot of machine embroidery, whether it's quilting or um, I like to do diapers in the in the hoop, um, if you do towels, anything that's a little bit thicker that you struggle to get hooped, this just makes it a lot easier. It's also a, a, the only place I know that you can get these are, are at your independent um, sewing dealers. So um, it's not sold in the regular box type stores. So um, you know, it's just a product that I really like and I like to recommend it because it works really well for me. Um, I have somebody here that just said the Master Hooper was the best investment they ever made, and, and um, I, I love it too. I'm trying to look over the questions to see if anybody has anything else. I really appreciate all the thank yous. Thank you, thank you. If uh, you're looking for a copy of the webinar, I think Christy mentioned she will be sending one out on an email, and also you'll be able to find it on the home page as soon as they post it. Um, one of the questions for the Master Hooper was, do you use this with your hoop? Or is this a separate, uh, an entirely separate top and bottom hoop? This hoop is the hoop that I came with my machine. And um, so, uh, as I said, you order it for your brand of machine, and it, and you use the hoops that come with your machine. So this, this Master Hooper works with my small, medium, large hoop that came with my machine, and then it was optional to purchase the jumbo hoop, and it works with that one also. And it looks like this is all the questions that we have, and it is just a little after 7, so we're going to go ahead and close out the presentation. Um, once again, I want to... Christy and I both want to thank you all for joining us. We had a great time, and uh, thank you for all your uh, warm wishes.